Yeah. You know, that's what happened to me. I had a panic attack on Howard Stern's show. And uh, uh, he was, they were fucking around in the room. There was somebody who had done, I think it was the, anyway, some guy pulled his dick out and he's playing with his dick on the show and he was there and then he left and I saw that he touched the door. So when I finished my uh, segment with Howard, I was about to leave and I was wearing like short sleeves and, and I said, could somebody grab the door? I don't want to touch the fucking door. That guy had his dick all over the door. And they go, no, just open the door. I go, I'm a germaphobe. I don't want to touch the door. They go, touch the door. They were having fun with me. And I said, no. And I went to grab a tissue to grab the door. And they knocked the the tissue away from me. And then I I was trying to pull out my shirt tail. And they were holding me from that. And uh, I started to have a, I I never really talked openly about it before. And I started to have a panic attack. And I, and I was going and, and a a panic attack feels for those that have never had one. Like I'm having a heart attack. I can't breathe. And I couldn't function and I was getting dizzy. And I said, Howard, 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 you got to get me out of here. I'm going to end up in the hospital. I go to a psychiatrist. I have something called obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm on uh, medication. Please, you got to help me now. I'm going to pass out. I'm going to pass out. You got to open the door for me. You got to open the door. So he went, okay, okay. And he opened the door and I went out in the hall and I was sure that we were in a commercial when I was leaving. You know, he had finished with me and I was sure we were in a commercial, but I heard as soon as I walked out the other door, they were still, they go, whoa, whoa, what the fuck was that? What happened to Howie? And I realized we were on the air and that went out nationally. And you have to realize for me, that was the very first time that I had ever mentioned publicly besides to, besides to my own family, my maybe closest friends and wow. my uh, therapist and psychiatrist, what my issue was. And I was devastated when I heard it coming through the speakers, I, I went, fuck. And my first thought was, this is the end. This is the absolute end. Number one, my family is going to hear this and anybody they know. You know, I have three children and my wife is in L.A. Now it's on the air that, you know, I have mental health issues that I'm going to be, number one, they're going to be ridiculed at school. Your dad's a mental case. He has mental health issues. This is where my mind went. Number two, I'm never going to be able to get a job again. Any job, you know, they take insurance. When I say that I have mental health issues and I'm medicated and I need to see a psychiatrist, who's going to want to hire me? And number three, I'm just so humiliated and depressed. This is the end. And I'm standing there and I get in the elevator in Manhattan and I'm going down the the elevator and I think this is the end. I, I don't even know how to face my own children. I'm just going to run into traffic. I don't know what to do. And I got down to the lobby and I'm looking through the lobby, Manhattan, the most teeming city in the world with thousands of people out on the streets and, and the traffic. And I go through the automatic doors and doors open. I'm standing there on the sidewalk and I'm just, you know, getting up the wherewithal to take my leap into traffic. And as it was, some guy comes up into my periphery. I couldn't make eye contact. I didn't, I didn't want to. I was just looking down and he goes, are you Howie Mandel? And I went, yeah. He goes, I just heard you on Stern. And I could physically feel my heart drop into my stomach, you know? And I went, oh my God, you know, I'm just going to run one. And I went two and, and he whispered in my ear, I could feel the air of his breath on my ear. And he went, me too. And this is before me too meant what it means now. And I went, I I didn't know what it meant. I went, what does that mean? Me too. He goes, no, I suffer too. I'm very depressed and I'm very anxious. And I have, it was so thank you for, you know, doing that publicly. I go, well, wow. I didn't do it on purpose, but he goes, it, it made me feel like I'm not alone. And I said, well, you just, and I turned to him, you just, you just opened up a little door for me. I, you know, the, the one overwhelming in our darkest moments, if there was one description that you could give to anybody in their darkest moments is, is that they feel alone. They feel so, like, look what's happening to me. Look at this dark hole I'm going down. Look at what's happening. It's not, you're not, there is no company in that. There is no joy in having other people around. But now I had this other person around and he made me feel good. And I didn't run into traffic and I'm here today. But after that, this was before email and before the internet, I started getting every week, I started getting a ton and ton of, a ton, tons of uh, letters and mail going, thank you, thank you. And you had no idea. I wasn't helping them. But every time I got these letters, it helped me. I go, oh my God, it's, how nice is this to be able to know that you're not alone? It's like the buddy system in swimming, you know? It could be cold, it could be choppy, but there's other people there. And if you need help, just reach out your arm. They're there. And it, what, a, what a, a, a journey 
from that moment on the sidewalk in Manhattan to sitting here and talking to you today is is night and day. That's the yin and the yang. And what needs to happen for absolutely everyone.